this thing. I've got one of your blogs from April the 11th, 2012. The headline is, it's time for women to reject feminism and kiss Peter Pan goodbye. <laughs> yes, it is. In an attempt to explain why a generation of women born in the 1960s and 70s are finding themselves living lives of solitude, a male friend emailed me all the, singles, all the single ladies thinking I'd buy into the writer's load of crap. <laughs> Strong. 39-year-old single woman spends an endless amount of ink trying to convince herself and single women everywhere that they are happy living empowered lives of solitude, which couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, what fired you up over this one? I think it was, I'm trying to remember what article that was, Atlantic Monthly or something like that, but um, that I wrote about, but what the article I was referencing. What fired me up is that we do have a lot of uh, women I would say late 30s, 40s, who were highly educated. Um, some some people would say overly educated, and we're single. You know, we're coming up short on the man department. And I think that when I think back in my mother's generation, it was while they had fewer choices as far as careers go. Um, you know, most of them, majority of them, if they wanted to be married, they were married. They had families. And I think with our generation, they wanted us to so much take advantage of the opportunities before us, they forgot to go back to basics and say, you know what, it's what I told you earlier, Brian, it's okay, marriage is okay, it's actually a fun thing. And I think what, fi what bothers me with feminism is that you can do it all. You know, you can have a baby without a man, you can bring home the bacon, you can cook it up in the pan, and the fact is you just can't. Women can't have it all. I don't think you can be a CEO of any company and and have it all as a woman you can't have a family and be a good mom at the same time I do want to read this line mm -hmm. just uh, for the audience's sake uh, while some women may generally want to live alone I believe that most women including the author meaning you don't want to live in solitude or be in, an independent woman yeah I, I believe that I think if you put women in a confessional situation even if uh, they don't necessarily believe in God, but whoever their uber power is that they they put their uh, confidence in and their you know life, so to speak, if you were to ask a woman, do do you really like, do you really want to be alone? Um, and I'm talking more of you know I don't want to get into whether you're heterosexual or whatever. I think most most women want to be with someone. This I'd like to have you explain. You write, during my <laughs> senior year of college at Georgetown University, I was forced to take a feminist criticism seminar as part of my honors English major and hated it. Yeah, I did hate it. Why? Because all we read for the semester was um, criticism and critiques about how Shakespeare was a misogynist, D.H. Lawrence was a misogynist. Um, I think Ibsen was thrown in there. All the classics were somehow bad men in the way they portrayed women. I remember being in the discussion as we were trying to deconstruct the classics. I still By the way, did you have to take this course? Yes, I had to take it because At if Georgetown, I wanted yes, Catholic University. Oh yeah, if I wanted to be an honors graduate with honors English major, I had to take it. There were two seminars they offered, one in the fall and one in the spring. So we sat around, and I remember looking at the professor, and I said, you know, I'm sorry, I just don't think Shakespeare was trying to, um, you know, throw gasoline on women. He gave women voices. Macbeth, Julie, I mean, Lady Macbeth, Juliet. And so at the end of the class, what really bothered me, and we had to read a lot of criticism written by um, lesbian writers. And I was like, why do we have to keep reading all this stuff by lesbian women? You know, I mean, that's a redundant statement, but lesbian writers, you know, all this criticism. I, I just don't get it. So at the end of the class, the professor tells us, by the way, I just want to tell you all I'm gay, and I just wanted you to know that. So I'm thinking to myself, why is she telling us at the end of the class? And it might might have been nice to know that at the beginning of the the seminar, because then I would have known why she was shoving all this, uh, you know, lesbian criticism down our throats. I mean, it was really, you know, and I know we all are subjective individuals, and we come from a subjective place about where we were raised and who we are, but. I was, my parents were paying good money for me to go to Georgetown University, and I had to take a class which I felt was very slanted and biased. And I, I don't, I think feminism is a bunch of garbage. I think it's, it's written to make, to brainwash women into believing they can do it all on their own, and the big bad world is out there to hate them. Well, the world doesn't, you know, not all men hate women. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so. We're, we're almost out of time, but the final.